The Blessed Virgin gave us a message how to have world peace, that only, that only she can help us. But perhaps we don't get enough perspective. We say, well, nothing dramatic has happened. And it's because our commentators, our newspapers, our editor writers, the people that we really pay attention to, the people that speak on television in the mainstream press and so forth, people who are under the pay of the enemy often, have yet to point out to us that since we have despised Our Lady's message as a, the human family, we've despised it, there have been 1,686,570,000 violent deaths as a direct result of ignoring Our Lady of Fatima. That is, again, one billion. That is one with nine zeros after it, plus another 686 million people who have died violently for the one simple reason that we've ignored Our Lady of Fatima. We could point out, perhaps another time, that if this is not enough perspective to give us that in these 95 years of ignoring Our Lady of Fatima, we have paid a tremendous price. But as bad as that is, that price will be doubled or tripled in the next couple of years if we ignore her much longer. Just a few months ago, the world's population passed seven, seven billion people. Seven billion people. <laughs> Scripture tells us and other prophecies tell us that one-third to two-thirds of the entire population of mankind will be wiped out in this war to come. I don't know what it takes to wake us up. Maybe we have to find it on NBC or CBS or some commentator in the New York Times before we finally take this seriously. And maybe we say to ourselves we take it seriously, but I think we don't take it seriously enough. We have many priorities. Sometimes I wonder how I get through my day between what I'm supposed to do today, between getting up and doing my reading, uh, doing my other work, talking to people that, that God wants me to talk to and so forth. And we only all have 24 hours a day. And I'm sure that my life is not as busy as the bishops and the, and the Pope. But we must make this priority number one. There is nothing more serious, nothing more important, nothing more urgent than Our Lady's message at Fatima. And this is something that I don't know how to say. I remember getting a letter from an older bishop many years ago. I think he was in Ottawa. And he said to me basically in his letter, Father Gruner, if you would not raise your voice so much, if you would not yell at us, we might start paying attention to you. And I said, wrote back to him and I said, I appreciate very much your interest and your concern and your advice. Now, if you can tell me how I can do that any better than what I'm doing and get the attention, I'd be very happy to do it. I hate yelling at people. I hate raising my voice and I hate trying to draw attention to myself. But there's no other way around on this message. If there's something more important and certainly yesterday we were in this March for Life here in Rome. And the number of people that are killed by abortion since about 1980-75 by the statistics we looked up is about 1,300,000 people. And by war, there's another 78 million people. And then by government murder, not only in Russia and China, but other parts of the world, 238 million people. These are catastrophic, and they lead us to think that we are, as Pope Pius XII, rather Pius X, St. Pius X said, that we are in the days just before the coming of the Antichrist. These proportional, these things that are happening to us, which Pope Benedict, when he was Cardinal Ratzinger, said, that refer to this Fatima message is found in sacred scripture, that we are living the times of the apocalypse, and although we can be distracted with everything from daily newspapers to uh, 
new movies or whatever else it is that, that, in, that entertains us, these things are happening around us and they're happening every day. And they're happening in such a way that uh, how can we deny that we're living in, if it's not the apocalypse, if it is not the, the time coming before the Antichrist, it is the best, uh, shall we say, um, uh, preview or uh, event which would, the world has never seen before. Just looking at the Catholic Church, for example, the only other time in church history that comes close to this time is the Arian crisis, when 90% of the bishops were Arian. And there was only one, about three or four bishops who actually stood up, and the greatest of them all, St. Athanasius, was actually excommunicated by the Pope in 357 AD. Now, he wasn't really excommunicated because, as the Church has always recognized, as St. Thomas points out, that law is not something that just the legislator says. Law is the ordination of reason. It is for the common good. And as the Church law to this day points out that no one can be punished if he doesn't commit a crime. So, because Athanasius was standing up for the faith, because he was defending the faith, which was his duty to do, he could not be punished even if the Pope pronounced a sentence of excommunication. In fact, Liberius regretted his action. But Liberius is the first Pope not to be canonized from the time of St. Peter to the year 357. It's well for us to remember then that we need not be afraid of the judgments of men if we are on the right, on the right side of God. It's a principle that we need to keep in mind. We also have to understand that, that prophecy is a function in the church. It's a function that will never go away. It's a function that must be respected, just as the apostolic offices must be respected. As St. Paul tells us in Ephesians, the church is built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, not just the apostles. The role of prophecy is essential. Scripture tells us that we must not extinguish the Spirit. We must not despise prophecy, but we must test all things and hold fast that which is good. So that is why I've promoted the message of Fatima, not only because it's unique among all the messages, but of course it's been approved by the Church. As Father Joseph St. Marie pointed out, here in Rome, he's the one who wrote the speech for the Pope in 1982 when he went to Fatima. Father Joseph St. Marie points out that it is the role of the hierarchy to judge, to test whether the prophet speaks the truth. But once the hierarchy recognizes that the message comes from God, then the Pope himself and the bishops are bound to obey, not the prophet, but God who speaks through the prophet to them. That obligation is primordial. That is not for us to say, I'm telling the Pope what to do. No, but Our Lady Fatima is telling him what to do. All I do is explain what it means. I answer the objections of theologians or others who haven't had the time to think about it. So when we get back to 1917, Our Lady comes. She comes and gives a message to show mankind the way to peace. She was asked, she was insisted that she come, she comes and she explains. And then, for the next 95 years, we basically ignore her. So, our Lord himself, in 1931, explained to the Pope and the bishops something, a lesson from history. He said, make it known to my ministers, given they follow the example of the King of France, in delaying the execution of my command, like the king of France, they will follow him into misfortune. What is that What is that example he's talking about, the king of France? On the 17th of June, the, to the very day, the 17th of June, 1689, our Lord spoke to St. Margaret Mary and told her to tell the king of France to consecrate France to the Sacred Heart. Now the kings of France, there were three of them from that day, all ignored St. Margaret Mary's prophecy 
and our Lord's command through St. Margaret Mary. Even during her lifetime, St. Margaret Mary was known as a saint. She was not some, she was well hidden, but she, her reputation for sanctity was well known among her contemporaries. And so, for them to ignore this, they paid with their lives. On the 17th of June, 1789, that's 100 years later to the day, the King of France was stripped of his authority by the Third Estate. Three weeks later, the French Revolution, the storming of the Bastille, on the 20th or 21st of January, 1994, his head was cut off by the soldiers of the Revolution. And our Lord makes reference to this and says, make it known to my ministers, given they follow the example of the King of France, in delaying the execution of my command, like him, they will follow him into misfortune. Up until now, basically, the popes and the bishops around him have ignored, have delayed, have had one excuse after another. Uh, I think I've heard them all. And as we've had proven at this conferences before, none of those excuses really hold water. There is really no excuse for not doing it. However, that is not their choice up to now. And so we have a choice here. Of course, none of us are the Pope. None of us can command the Pope. Only he has the authority to command in the church himself or others, all the rest of the church. But we have, we are not without resources. We will talk about this in another conference. But it's not just for the Pope. As the Pope himself, speaking at Fatima two years ago, said, what is foretold in the secret is the passion of the church. And yes, there's a persecution of the Pope, but the church, the Pope is within the church. And so it's not just the Pope that suffers the passion coming up, but it is the church also.